we seem to think that the notion of risk for the soul is not really a serious issue. I've got news for you, it is. And if we look carefully at the situation in which we're in, we're actually in a very risky situation. The reason is this, if it weren't for redemption, the odds are actually hugely against us, because the one who wishes our eternal ruin is more clever than we are, and also has more power, but is actually limited in its use when it comes to a soul in a state of grace. So what will he do? He will try to make that soul lose its defence. It will make its immune system collapse, and all that he has to do for that to happen is to erode and attack, eventually completely, its state of grace, and leave it there, even if apparently it's still practising in such a way that sacrilege compounds its state. As it happens, I've been asked by someone that you wouldn't know at all to celebrate this Holy Mass for her sister, who was a nun, for release and awareness and healing from what she is involved in, a nun. New Age. Now, I don't know the nun at all, but I do know that this is an open door. And if one sees how this is pushed hugely over the planet by now, it is sinister. Because precisely it involves invoking, without knowing it, evil spirits who will not so quickly go away as they have come in, warmly invited. Now, that's only one. But the demon right now, because of his intelligence, has succeeded in making it so that even pious souls, if in any way ambling through the world, are going to be all the time surrounded by emanations of himself. Anything coming through a musical instrument, a radio, a television, a screen by now, is going to be proportionately infested. Therefore, he has at his fingertips something which gives him an advantage over souls who are hugely unaware. We priests know, especially when handling souls who might be not that far actually from meeting their Creator, whether these souls are aware of the danger or not, whether they have been aware for ages or not of what the issues were. Now, I want to make a jump because it's going into an even darker area with more influence yet. It's that of what we know to be the intelligence of those who serve the Prince of Iniquity, as in this Gospel, more intelligent in their own generation than the Sons of Light. We know from various things that have leaked out for a good while now, that there is a brain, an evil brain, working at one specific thing. Linked, of course, with what I mentioned at the beginning, it's that of destroying the means of putting people in a state of grace, the one true church. He is more interested in the Catholic Church than anything else. We know 
from a close look at the pattern of history from the 1700s onwards, that his ploy initially was to attack from without, but the Catholic Church was so perfectly constructed and protected that it was without essential effect. All it could do was be a nuisance. It couldn't destroy essentially its nature. And so, more close to us in time, those same demonic forces which wish us, wish us harm have found that the only way is to do so this time from within. And it has been in place for quite a long time. I will skip many details. If it's of interest to you, you can study it yourself. There's much material out there on it. But our generation is the very one that is witnessing a success not even dreamt of by those who were constructing this destruction already in the mid-1920s. We know that there had been a program set in place in 1925 for destroying, essentially, what pertained to the sacred, thereby making it happen that over the Catholic world, faith would be lost. Only this is possible with a huge weight of intelligence working on the ground, in collusion with those who were actually in place to protect the church, but who would also be attacked without knowing it on the level of their immune system in such a way that they would not be aware of what was actually going on and thereby collude with it. That last bit has come out in exorcism that actually the best collaborators of the demonic forces have been, in recent years, the priests. I'll come back to that in a second. But I quote, first of all, this. It is a linkage from Freemasonry in 1925. How can one rob the faithful of their belief in the true presence? First, one must bring people everywhere to receive communion while standing. Then, one must place the host in their hands. Prepared in this fashion, they will come to see the Eucharist as a mere symbol of a general brotherly meal and will thereby fall away. Going back further still, well into the 19th century, we may here also quote Stanislaus the Guaita. He was a fallen away priest, a Kabbalist, a Satanist, and a model for all Freemasons. Quote, when we have succeeded in having Catholics receive communion in the hand, then we will have met our goal. I want to jump now to the question of what's happened in the priesthood. I had with me an elderly friend this week and I was glad she appeared because I wanted to ask her again the details of what she had told me quite a few years ago, and I noted it point by point. She would be a senior citizen, so we're going back now in time. She 
she was talking of a relative of the mother, her own mother here. So we're going back already a few generations, and this, her own mother, has this to say. That her father, so we're going back further in time again, told her this. There is a prophecy, and I would like to know where it's come from, but it's been handed down, obviously, as a safe source. And it's in four parts. The Irish will have plenty of money yet. Now remember, we're going back now a long way when this has been written, great poverty. But it will be no good to them. Now that could be closer than we think in time, a crash. Two, the Irish will lose their faith and it will be the fault of the priests. At the time this was being communicated, it was unthinkable. Three, a father will meet his son in the street and they will not know each other. Four, women will lose their shame. This is Old English, going back now generations, it means modesty and all that goes with it. The father in question was of quite an age, a very old man. So we're going right back now when the faith was very strong but there was great poverty, and we see here a collaboration, a corroboration between what actually has come through in exorcism, that the demon has, under pressure, confessed that those who are most useful to him now are the priests. Because in his name, without knowing it, they're doing his work. That is not in his name, but for him. I want to just conclude with one other related issue which explains partly how the priests could end up in this situation. It's a teaching given by Pope Benedict. It actually also can be seen because I keep getting right now casualties from seminary formation who come to me because they find that still it's out there that they're looking for a certain type of priest and others are being discouraged. And so, we have here what Pope Benedict says about the danger to the priesthood in our time. He goes in this direction, basing it on the teaching of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He holds up this supremely active contemplative before the eyes of all priests, indicating that true efficacy in the Lord's work presupposes being anchored in the Lord in such a way that one's word is his. And by the way, this same Bernard of Clairvaux, even though he was one of the greatest preachers of Europe, and got the Crusades moving. When he went into church with his brethren as abbot, with all the weight of Europe on his shoulder, and all the foundations being made, even here in Ireland actually, he would go before the church door, that is the actual door which opens from the cloister to the abbey church, and take holy water, and say to his problems, Restez ici, je vous reprendrai en sortant. Stay here, I will take you up again on coming out. 
And thus, God reigned when he was in the Abbey Church, which was extraterritorial. Remember that next time you're in church. Leave your mobile off. Be inaccessible. Otherwise, it's happening to you too. There has to be a space where you're in front of God and living before him with no contamination so that he at then at least can get through to you and speak to you and tell you what he wants you to do. Otherwise, we'll end up with this, which is what Pope Benedict indicated. The illness of activism. It's the great ally of Satan in the priesthood in such a way that the priest is always doing things for God but can't hear God anymore. He's an easy prey when at last he's no longer really in intimacy with Jesus Christ and then comes what? No interior life. Only recycling what he has and woof, a temptation comes and there's no immune system. Every time the demon gets a priest, all the consequences follow. All the sacraments not celebrated. All the souls not saved. It's a huge attack. And we think it's just a social tragedy.